welcome to Inside the Barrel. It's been a couple weeks since our last recording, so John and I thought we'd do a special one for you and invite Nate as a guest, and I'll give Nate a little introduction about himself shortly. But essentially, for if this is your first uh, video with us, then essentially what we do is we talk about consulting life inside uh, of task and how we solve problems and try to get into technical things so that you don't have to do it um, uh, alone. So welcome back, John. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you have a good ho you have a good holiday. I had a good one. Right. Yeah, I mean, I currently live in Portugal now, so oh. I know. So they don't celebrate Thanksgiving here, apparently. Um, wow, go figure. Well, yeah. you should make it a thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was telling all my friends that like Columbus, you know, brought over German beer, and there was more beer than people. So I was trying to like get them more involved. <laughs> so what you're saying is everyone drinks a lot in Portugal. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> why is it a big deal here? Well, it looks like you still have some pictures to get hung there, so you're not quite moved in yet, huh? Yeah, uh, totally. It's still a work in progress. Um, <laughs> awesome. But, Cool. So, Nate, if you want to give a little intro about yourself and then tell us what yeah. we're talking about. Uh, so, uh, Nate Weldon, um, one of the uh, senior directors here at CASC. I have overall responsibility for our technical services group, um, which, uh, you know, comprises our developers and engineers. And we're, we're kind of responsible for making the magic happen. Um, you know, I've been with CASC going on, oh, wow, over seven years now, as of two weeks ago. Um, and then prior to that, I was with a ServiceNow customer for six, for five years. So I've been around the platform since 2009. Um, so back when they were named after the seasons and you'd get three releases a year um, and before scopes ever existed. Uh, so I've, I've been around for a little while, um, but uh, I love the platform. Um, I'm, I'm a firm believer in, in that there's almost nothing that you you cannot do with the platform. Also, from lessons learned, some things you should not do with the platform. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, uh, you know, it's it's it's. I'm I'm really psyched to see it going in the direction that it is um, because, you know, for for the longest time, I kept hearing, "Oh, it's just an IT ticketing tool," and that would make me cringe. So super, yeah. super psyched to be here today and. Uh, Glad to share this little use case that we we came across. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, you have way more experience on this platform than I think <laughs> I was still in college when <laughs> you were working on this platform. Okay, well, thank you for making me feel old. Um, no, no, no. no. <laughs> you're, you're well seasoned. Well seasoned. <laughs> well seasoned. Yes, that's the perfect term. Well seasoned. <laughs> and you might, know, you know, my background was not as a developer. My background was in infrastructure and support. Um, so, you know, I spent a lot of time in data centers and help desks and, and field services groups. Um, but when I, when I came onto the platform, you know, there was, there were two partners. Um, it was Fruition and uh, the company that turned into Cloud Sherpas, I forget what their Navigus. Um, so you really had, you really lived and died by the community back then. Um, and it was super helpful. Like I, I just, I can't, count how many times I was rescued by the community because I wasn't a coder. I didn't really, you know, I, I went I went and did some online courses for JavaScript, but wasn't my history, wasn't my experience, but just kind of had to jump into the deep end as a customer back then. Um, and, you know, that was that was back when knowledge was held in a, a parking lot here in San, there in San Diego. <laughs> that was wow. a fun knowledge. Awesome. awesome. <clears throat> um, yeah, so so what are we what are we talking about today? So uh, you know a little bit about the use case. Um, we we had a, a, a recent customer that wanted to um, they wanted to leverage something similar to the out of the box uh, onboarding order guide, um, but they wanted to do something interesting with a couple of the items that were part of that order guide. So uh, one of those items was you know the standard email request. Um, you know what 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 could happen in their environment is someone might ask for an email account but they don't know what email address they're going to ask for yet or the preferred email address might not be available and they don't have the integration back to active directory or exchange or o365 to to do the double check on whether or not it's an available email address on submit 
So what what they asked for was, you know, we need to let HR and the hiring manager know if that email address, like what's the final email address that they're going to get. So what we wound up doing was, um, well, we, we, we struggled with it a little bit because, you know, we originally we searched the community, we searched, you know, all the, all the standard channels. Um, and we couldn't really find a solution for monitoring variables after they've been submitted, which I was actually a little bit shocked to not not see that you know prevalent in the community because I'd have figured it would be common for folks to be asking for. Um, so you know a little bit of research led us to you know the the SC item option table, which is where all the values of variables are stored on submit, and we took a look at that table and said, great. This is this is where we need to be. We can just dot walk from this to the to the to the rhythm, and then use current dot variables in an email notification to let the the customers and the stakeholders know that this is what the final email address is, or your requested email address was not available and it's it's now changed. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, long story short, it turns out you can't dot walk your way to it because there's no actual relationship. There's no reference field on the SC item option table back to the requested item. There's a many to many table. Um, I, I forget the name of it off the top of my head, but uh, there's a many to many table that's used that you have to query from the SC item option table to get to the requested item. At first, what we tried was to, um, uh, excuse me, I lost my train of thought. At first, what we tried was uh, to use mail script from a notification um, uh, and uh, leverage an event that's triggered by the change in a business rule. So that all was working. We can trigger the notification, but what we couldn't get to populate were the actual values, the current values of the variables once they had changed. Um, so doing a little bit of research, um, for whatever reason, we couldn't get current dot variables to work from inside or but we couldn't get anything other than current dot variables to work. Uh, so glide record dot variables, rec dot variables, any, any which way we tried to get to the variables by just using mail script, we, we were unsuccessful. So what we wound up figuring out was instead of using the default value, which is passed in the event, uh, when you're, when you're triggering your event, you know, your, your standard value is going to be current and that's going to pass the current value of the record. But if you tell the system, no, I want current to be something else, we were able to actually successfully leverage that by telling the system current meant the, stand, the, the current requested item rather than uh, <clears throat> the item option. So what that then allowed us to do is to leverage current.variables for any variable that was on that requested item, not just the one that we were monitoring. So yes, we're monitoring the email variable for change, but we want to go ahead and now we can leverage all the other variables that are on that requested item, like the requested for, requested for dot manager. Um, HR department was actually a hard coded email address, but uh, that's my dog. Um, uh, but, you know, so it, long story short, it wasn't as simple as we thought, but once we figured out how to, how to trick ServiceNow into thinking that the rhythm was current and not the SD item option record, uh, we were able to successfully uh, pass in any single variable. So I'm going to share my screen now. And let's just make sure I'm sharing the right window here. Uh, so this is my PDI. Um, this is all out of box. I didn't do Just lost Dorian. Oh, there he is. Um, <clears throat> So uh, John's still learning the system. So <laughs> <laughs> John's still learning how to use this tool. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so you know, I'm I'm just going to use the out of the box email account or or email request. So you know, it's pretty simple. I want Nate at cask LLC dot or ask caskbenx dot com. That's our old email domain. Order now. Just going to use the standards.
So this is the rhythm we just opened. And we notice Nate at caskNX.com. So if we wanted to see or monitor that variable for change, we've got to do that on the SC item option table. And I see I got a couple of entries here, so I've been testing this just to make sure I didn't mess up the uh, mess up the demo. But <clears throat> uh, this wasn't an actual card item, but we notice we've got Nate at CaskNX.com. Now, if I wanted to change that, or let's say the email team comes back to to my hiring manager and says, "Sorry, you can't have Nate at CaskNX.com because that's already been taken, and it actually already has by me." Um, but uh, let's just go. We're going to change this. And we're going to use my actual email address. And I'm going to jump over to the sent items to just show you what a quick output of this would look like. And, and does that change it on the, the actual rhythm itself as well when you change that value there? It does. So uh, let, me, let me show you. It's a great question. Just so, like, if if they change it there, it also changes it there as well. Yeah. Okay. So, cool. so in in the real world, this would happen as part of a catalog task, right? So, this mm -hmm. would be an exposed variable on that specific catalog task, either in flow or a workflow, and we it would be writable for that catalog task only. Um, and then the assignment group that's assigned to actually create the email address would populate it, type it in. Um, ideally, you would want some sort of automation there, but this this customer unfortunately didn't have that. So, but if you'll notice the preferred email address, this is this is the related SE item option records. So I could change it here. I could change it as part of a catalog task. I could directly change it on the table, which I already did, and it's going to trigger this notification. Uh, that should be in the outbox, actually, because we don't have outbound email going on this. Uh, aha. So I added a quick notification. And this is the, the value. Cool. So the business rule and I probably should have been a little bit better prepared and had these just up. I apologize. But I wrote a quick business rule. Um, naming conventions are going to vary for business rules. Typically, we have something um, that, that we do for all of our customers just to let them know that, that we were the ones that wrote it. I completely ignored that here um, and just uh, wrote this quick business rule. So when to run, um, <clears throat> I put after update. You have to tell it which field you want to look for. And then uh, you have to tell it when the value changes. Otherwise, every time the question is updated or, or something else triggers, you're, you're, you may trigger this business rule. Um, pretty straightforward conditions, um, actions we pretty much left alone. And then in the advanced section, this is where the magic happens. Uh, so we are selecting, uh, so we are querying from the current SC item option table record to the SC item option many to many table, which is what this glide record query is, is handling right here. So we find out what the current value of the, the rhythm is, and we pass that value here in the event queue. So uh, by default, the second place in the event queue when you're writing to it is going to be what represents current. So because we're passing GR here for current, when we get to the mail script, which I'll show well, actually it's not even a mail script, it's just a simple notification. Once we get to the notification, that's gonna look that's gonna be current. So question Nate, real quick on that script. Yeah. Um, 
and this is going to go to like best practices a question there um, because I see that you're using GR and we know how yes some people, uh, some people get about GR yes yeah uh, are you supposed to wrap that in a function or is it already considered wrapped in a function uh, because the, it's, um, you should wrap that in a function okay um, uh, because by default business rules won't um, and I forget yeah, but I, I would say that you should wrap that in a function, John. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I think I think though, as long as the business rule isn't running in global, in theory, the script is running because it's a function up top, like line one. I yeah. think well, that, yeah, it that, is. That, yeah, there that's what I was global getting after. Yeah, and and don't get confused out there. When when we say global, there used to be a way to run business rules globally on any table. <laughs> um, that's not the same as saying it's in the global application scope. Right. Um, when we, yeah. when we, when we, and, and it was a very strict use case that you're actually supposed to use global business rules. Those were since replaced by script includes a long time ago. Um, so you know, I, I would definitely avoid, you, you, I don't even know if you can create a global business rule anymore. I think you can, or at least I know of one, because I had a bug a, a previous time, and the bug was related to a global business rule that was running. Okay. Um, the right. service now is global business rule, not not like a custom one that was created. So. Yeah. Um, I, I yeah. It, it, no real reason to use those anymore. Um, yeah. And to be honest, even back in '09, you know, back in the aughts, I didn't. I didn't <laughs> I didn't really have to use global business rules ever, um, but but again, you know, I didn't get into really complex coding back then. I was just I was just trying to get incident problem and change off the ground. So I do have a question about monitoring. So uh, I wonder is it is it possible to run the business rule on the the rhythm and then? See, I think there is an option for variable changes. But I, it's been a long time since, so I, I don't actually know. Um, and then have your script manage when the variable changes. Because because the values are written to the, the item option table, I, I don't know that a, a business rule on the request item would have picked that up. I'm pretty mm -hmm. confident that it wouldn't have because business rules monitor table actions, not related mm -hmm. table actions, at least as far as I recall. Um, John, you might want to prove me wrong on that one. It looks like you're 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 questioning my. No, I'm trying. I'm trying to think. The last time I wrote anything, like I'm trying to think of the the uh, the query builder, and if you can actually get into uh, related fields that way. And I don't. I don't remember. I don't think I ever go to related uh... tables through business rules. Yeah, you know, to be honest, I've never really tried. So maybe the next time we do this, um, we, can, we can give that a go. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking like potentially just writing a business rule on the uh, rhythm and then calling like current dot variables dot whatever the name is dot changes, right? Like in the condition up there, and mm -hmm. then you then you have access to if it ever changes. Um, it, again, it's been a while, so I, I don't. This is this is really cool because I've never even like used this table. So it's like yeah. interesting to know that variables <laughs> live on this table. It it so uh, I think Chuck did something a few years ago loosely related to this. Um, so that's how we came across the the SE item option table. Um, that wasn't too hard to figure out. Um, but what what was a challenge was recognizing that you had to query the many-to-many -many table to get mm -hmm. between the records. Um, that was something uh, that, that we had to figure out. Um, but let me show you the notification real quick. And this is the one. And it's going to jump to the, what it will contain. And if I wanted to add, even though I'm not passing, you know, even though I'm querying the SE item option table for this, because I'm using the rhythm now, I can use a 
Oh, well, this is actually... This is a table or a field on the rhythm itself, so I don't even have to dot walk my way into anything. Yeah, that's. I mean, it was it was cool. We you showed, you know, one a table where all of those items are, or where all of the variables are. And you also showed like event, you know, event queue, right? And being able to manipulate event queue for for your own uses. Um, yeah, and if if we had wanted to pass some some other information in, uh, we could have used sysparm one and or excuse me, parm one and parm two, um, but we didn't need to because all the information is is now. Uh, readily available just by going to the requested item and and leveraging the current dot variables, um, which actually used to be current dot variable underscore pool, um, but now either will work. Yeah, I'm curious. I mean, I know we're a little over, but do you, do you have a few minutes? Do you want to just create a, a business rule, um, a new business rule, and sure. Oh, second, you could if you want to continue, Sean. And I probably should have changed that to email address has been modified, but awesome. Yeah. yeah, super cool. All pretty straightforward and just really tricking the system into thinking something else is the current record. Awesome. Yeah, so I'm curious if you know, maybe if we could do a quick little test here on on the business rules. So sure. if if we write a biz, a new business rule on the requested item table. And it's always interesting, like whether to create the business rule or do it in a workflow. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I don't know if I want to. It depends. Oh, yeah, uh, it's yeah. going to depend on who you ask. Coders will be like business rule. Yeah, yeah. yeah. front end guys will be like, oh, flow for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and it's. Yeah, I use the rule of thumb. I use the rule of thumb for me as if there's no logic you're doing, like you're not doing a bunch of if statements, waiting for something and then doing it, I use a business rule versus like if it's flow or workflow, I have access to a bunch of like the if statements, waiting for things to happen and, yeah. and then processing. Um, I would say if you're less experienced with JavaScript and you can't do what you need to do by just setting field values with the business rule, um, your, your best bet's probably a flow. Right, because it kind of abstracts the JavaScript layer out of it, and as long as you can think in uh, in in out and think like an algorithm, then Flow Designer will work for you. Um, and that's actually how I got past some coding challenges recently. You know, where I just it it was going to be a complicated bit of code, and I didn't have a senior dev available to help me out, so I just I pivoted to Flow because I wasn't going to be able to figure out the JavaScript. Um, so it, it can be helpful, um, especially for low-code, no-code situations. Now, cool. realize if it's again, if it's not super complicated, you don't have to use any code on a business rule. You have the actions where you can Correct. set fill values <clears throat> with no code. I yeah, thought that was pretty nifty addition when they add that in. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't really remember when that came out, but that was I, I stumbled upon that one too. Um, that's definitely handy. That's what I meant by like using not condition builder, but actions. Action set. Right. You, yeah. know, you don't have to know code to set values of things. Um, I will say, you know, even though I'm not a coder, I tend to default to that method a lot now, though. Um, you know, because it's just it just feels faster to type it out than to deal with a bunch of clicks. Um, but but I also do a, used to do a lot of network admin, so um, I, I'm a big CLI fan. Well, as a coder, I also agree. I feel like I can make it do whatever I want because I can write the code to make yep. it. Yep. But that's yeah. not always the right answer, John. No, no. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. Yeah. Oftentimes, it's probably the wrong answer. No. <laughs> probably, but I can't see it because I'm too busy writing the code. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so, yeah, so, uh, so, do you want to try? Let's it? create it. Yeah, just we'll just click new and then put the table as the. Oh, it's already there. Perfect. Okay. When to run? Can you go to the choose fields? Is there variables in there? 
uh, on the when to run on the additional filter condition. Oh yeah. Does variables exist here? I don't. I don't remember. No, it doesn't. Okay, so leave it on always, and do select update, and then just name this like test change variable, and then under and then submit this because we're gonna go or click advance. Sorry. We need to. Yeah, save it before you get the option. Oh, okay. That button advanced on the right. Checkbox. Right under oh. active. Duh, there you go. Yeah, cool. And then go to advanced. And, and then type for the condition, do you up top, so before you even get into the script, do you like current dot variables dot and then whatever the name of that field we're modifying if you remember the name of that internal field let, let, yeah yeah if you, okay cool dot uh, changes as a function yeah so now we'll just do like a gs dot info or something there just to see if this runs right because i'm curious like if this would run you wouldn't need to use the other table right you could just you know monitor this granted this isn't efficient right because this business rule is going to run every time because there's no conditions for it um yeah, can't do single quotes there Nate. oh yeah, yeah. or or ex, uh, escape it yep 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 but what My i think the proper grammar has fouled me up <laughs> i i think where you would make this like like we could get more creative of like the filter condition to be only on these catalog request items, right? But I'm just curious if like if this monitors changes and and so if this fires when you change that email address, let me because um, it'd be another a path you could go rather than querying the um, or rather than writing a business rule in the option table. Uh, and then see. you want to time it and see which one's more expensive <laughs> if it <laughs> yeah. works. Yeah, because we're always talking about being performant, right? We want performance. <laughs> I like it. Double check that that's the right variable. <laughs> I only bring that up because I've been bit a couple of times on slow performance, and uh, it should be forefront in your thinking. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm thinking. I'm like, all right, the filter condition would be only on this catalog item, right? And uh, well, yeah, if you can trim it down to only happen when it specifically needs to happen. I think it's called that probably is yeah, it's probably a little cheaper. And so what Nate's showing right now is the um, the field type. So if you ever wanted to access it in a script, um, you access it by its name, this internal name, rather than the the field that shows to the Yep, I'm just waiting customer. for that refresh. Oh, so that would not have triggered Okay. Good check. Since <clears throat> so it'd be on the condition up top, yeah. yeah. All right. Let's give this Let's... a go. If this works, we should rename this episode to Teaching Old Dogs New Tricks. <laughs> oh, my God. We're called a fire truck. It's burning in Utah right now. You see that email right. address, John? <laughs> Ooh. And FYI, Nate is my boss, so it, is, <laughs> it will happen. <laughs> Love it. Uh, a little bit of fun on a third Tuesday morning. Right, yeah. Tuesdays need fun because yeah, they need get fun. nothing Let's else. <laughs> Let's check the log and the info log and see if we. Also, a fun fact: I never do info. I always do error. <laughs> like the info really? log, like it runs like I can never find what I need. You know? Oh, see, I just do dollar sign. I do like three or four dollar signs in front of it, uh, and then I just do a search for dollar signs. <laughs> and I think you said it, it like star working or something like that. I don't remember what you did. Yeah. Nope. So no. or. I think it was working. No. Yeah. Okay. So maybe that didn't that didn't fire. Um, yeah. So there's probably more. I'd have to. That was my initial idea when I when I when I saw this. But there's there's got to be some way that 
the request item monitors those changes. Um, it, it, it's interesting. It's we, like, cause I don't think I've ever seen a documentation about the, the option one. So I think it's yeah. like very hidden to most people. And so that's why I was curious if, um, uh, you know, I think I found it somewhere oh. in the documentation, but I, I don't so recall. I think, I think you also made the modification on the option table directly. Could you actually do it on the rhythm instead? to see if it fires because you didn't technically modify the request item. Yeah, you only point. modified the Let me double check. Um, oh, wrong one. Give me one sec. You know what? I'm just going to mold school. <laughs> There's uh, so many let people me tell that you don't though, know those being, shortcuts. Yeah, being old school though really helps out. I was on a project where they had renamed HR stuff. And so you couldn't just do, you know, like case. You couldn't get the cases in the left oh, side. Really? They had renamed it. Yeah. And so it was just much easier to type in S N H R court case mm -hmm. every time because you couldn't find it in the nav anymore. Yeah. So yeah, I I love those. I mean, I, I always so when I used to teach the sysadmin class, um, I, I used to you know tell everyone, show everyone that one as part of list demo and and just the interface demo, and everybody was like, oh wow, I didn't know you could do that. Um, I think it was dot do dot list dot config, and what's the other one? Those are the three that I use. Those are the three. Yeah, those are the only three that I yeah. use. And and then capital have, versus not capital. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. On a different tab. <laughs> All right. So we'll see if our log showed up this time. Yes. Hey. Congrats. Cool. So that will sit. We've worked too. Yeah. Awesome. I, I like your you know solution because you got to show different ways to do this. This is this is actually a, a teaching moment. There's lots of different ways to do a solution in ServiceNow. <laughs> well, that's, that's <laughs> just what I was going to say. You know, ServiceNow is so flexible. It is. It, it, it does. You know, you, you can do things a couple of different ways, sometimes yeah. more than you even know. But it's no different <laughs> than a Microsoft Word doc, right? Yeah. You can you can format things and get to the formatting menu and or use quick keys or do all these other things. And that's the that's the power of a robust platform is, is you have options of, of achieving tasks. Now, some options are going to be better than others, especially for system performance. So, you know, like John said, I'd, I'd be I'd be interested to see if, if we had a more complex use case and had to monitor all the variables. How could, how could we do that on a requested item for change for any change to any variable for like a regulatory type reason? Right. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and just for people like we did current dot variables dot you know new email. You could have just done current dot variables dot changes, and then that would essentially monitor any variable that changes, and then yeah. just in your script you know access them. So, yeah, yeah, cool, absolutely. Well, awesome. Thank you, gentlemen. It's been a blast. Um, hopefully, you'll have me yeah. back sometime. And uh, yeah, fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always. I mean, I always love when John's boss is on is on video. So. <laughs> it does say that we have a, a a message in chat. Oh, that was that oh, was me. That was, I was oh, just okay. Got it, got it, got it, got it. We can talk, but you know, if there wasn't someone on stream, it would show up on uh, on our screen. So. Oh, okay. Well, awesome. Cool. All, All right. right. It was fun. Yeah. yeah. Have a good day. Okay. We'll see you guys. <laughs>